So today we will try to understand about video stroboscopy. Uh, what is it? And uh, as a ENT surgeon, when we are reading a report of video stroboscopy and analyzing it, or when we are doing it, we should be able to give correct report and, uh, and analyze it properly. Uh, so next 15 minutes, let us clarify all our doubts about video stroboscopy. I'll share my screen. So uh, today in video stroboscopy, we will be understanding about uh, what is video stroboscopy, why is it done, when to do it, when we have a report or when we are assessing how to assess and what is the future of this. So most, this is the most commonly used method to visualize the vocal fold vibration. In present times, if in voice assessment, stroboscopy is not done, the assessment is not complete. It detects the vocal cord pliability, mainly the fun healthy, mainly the functioning of the mucosa and deeper layers of vocal cord can be detected by stroboscopy. Uh, the, the principle of Talbot's law also needs to be understood <clears throat> to understand what is stroboscopy because our retina can perceive not more than five distinct images per second. So uh, in short, when some images are projected to retina very quickly or within 0.2 seconds, the human retina will perceive it as a common single image. For example, if I flip a coin in the space, I would not be seeing the coin entirely moving down. Each and every movement would not be seen, but we will be just seeing some movements because it is flipping very fast and a retina will perceive it as a single image. So to know such fast moving object, we need something called as strobe light. Strobe light is nothing but a flickering light which flickers at the frequency or at the speed on which the object is moving. So a flickering light is a strobe light. So to understand it in a little bit more detail. So when we see a shower cap, a shower from which the water is coming down, obviously our eyes will not be seeing each droplet coming down. We will just see the entire flow of water because each droplet is coming one after the other very, very quickly. Now, suppose I want to see each droplet separately. What we do is we give a flickering light on the droplet. And when the flickering light is same as the speed of the droplet coming down, our eyes will perceive it at, at a stable at, at one point. So imagine drops coming down, light is flickering on, off, on, off. At every next drop, the light comes. Every next drop, the light comes. Every next drop, the light comes. Or I will perceive it only one drop. It will see a stable. But when the flickering light or the stroke frequency is more, we will see that the droplets are gradually moving up. And when the stroke frequency or the flickering light is has a speed lesser than the frequency of the movement of the droplets, our eyes will perceive as a slow in a slow motion the droplets coming down. Same example when we see a fan moving at a fast rate, we cannot count the number of blades that the fan has. But when we throw a strobe light on it or a flickering light on it, we can see a slow movement of the blade and then by which we can understand the movement of the blades of the, of the fan. Same frequency X. So anything which is moving very fast, we will not be able to, the eyes will not be able to perceive those movements because the, because the retina will perceive it as a single image. Now, vocal, why do we need this? Because vocal cords or vocal folds, they vibrate at a speed of 100 to 500 cycles per second. And obviously our eyes, naked eye will not perceive it. So when we see a normal ideal or a video laryngoscopy, we will be seeing just the opening and the closing of the vocal cords. Those vibrations would not be seen. Just opening and closing would be seen. But if we want to see these vibrations, something which is moving very fast, we need a strobe light which will flicker at a rate between 100 and 500. And that is why the stroboscopy came into existence. We also need to understand what is glottic cycle because the vocal folds are not just opening and closing. If you see this movement in the vocalization moment, it is the vocal folds first opens in the lower part, then the middle part, and then the upper part. And this is how the glottic cycle completes. So when the air comes from the uh, in, in, from the air comes from subglottis, first the lower part opens, then the middle part, then the upper part, and even closure happens in the sequence. And this glottic cycle needs to be remembered because this happens very fast. 
in a normal light or in a video laryngoscopy we will not be able to perceive this opening closing movement we will just see a full adduction full abduction and the adduction movement of the vocal fold this cycle would not be seen and to see this cycle we need stroboscopy uh, there is also another theory which says body cover theory in which the epithelium forms the cover of the vocal fold and the body is formed mainly by the by the second third layer of lamina along with the muscle and the epithelium with the first layer of lamina forms the cover and it is this cover uh, which moves like a wave again this would not be seen if we have a single light we need flickering or a strobe light to see this phenomena as well so what all things are required for this we require uh, obviously we need the patient who who needs to be evaluated we need a strobe light it can be a flexible through a flexible endoscope or through a rigid scope whereby strobe light whereby the flickering of the strobe light happens the flickering of the strobe light happens at a frequency slightly lower than the frequency of little bit lower than the frequency of the movement of the vocal fold then this strobe light is connected to a video processor and then we can see the movement of the vocal folds on the monitor so we need a stroboscope from which the strobe light goes which is then connected to the tv monitor video processor and tv monitor and thus we, we can see this so there is a electrode or a microphone which is kept on the thyroid cartilage and this will detect the frequency or the movement of the vocal fold which is the fundamental frequency right understand this so we keep the a uh, 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 microphone on the thyroid cartilage and the patient is told to phonate as the patient phonates the frequency is picked up by the microphone and thus the stroboscope detects the primary or the fundamental frequency of that patient and based on that fundamental frequency the strobe light generates the frequency generates the flickering of the light which is slightly lesser than the fundamental frequency so thus we get slow motion video clips of the vocal fold during phonation so we can see the each movement of different waves so we get a slow motion video clips of the vocal fold during phonation understand it is not a slow motion it is not that we are seeing each waves in slow motion it is a perceived slow motion i repeat it is not that we are seeing each vocal folds each vocal vibratory cycle in slow motion it is a perceived slow motion that we are seeing because strobe light is falling at different points in different parts of glottic cycle now when do we do it all voice disorders any patient coming with any kind of voice disorder we should go for stroboscopy um if it is uh, if it is if we have a choice sometimes we do a vl scopy and many times patient comes who have voice change but when we do ideal or a or, or a flexible scopy or a rigid scopy we don't see any problem they are ideal cases then we are suspecting malignancy if we see a lesion but we want to know the depth of the lesion how the lesion performing on the on the body of the vocal folds and to predict the prognosis so we have a lesion but we want to predict the prognosis then we need this stroboscopy now what to do now it is not just we put the stroboscope and tell the patient to say e and we see what it is it's not we require something we need to do this in a uh, modal phonation in high pitch phonation and in low pitch phonation the so modal phonation high pitch phonation and low pitch phonation is when we need to see this and uh, what do we do it so what do we see uh, now when we are doing a stroboscopy we are just we, we are what all things that we need to analyze so first most important point is the fundamental frequency it is the frequency this frequency may vary from person to person obviously it will vary from gender gender also but from person to person also the fundamental frequency varies besides that periodicity amplitude symmetry closure mucosal wave these five things are important to be known periodicity amplitude symmetry glottic closure mucosal wave commonly what i have seen is people just comment on the mucosal wave and the closure but periodicity amplitude symmetry is not commented so we need to comment on periodicity amplitude symmetry glottic closure mucosal wave so fundamental frequency the moment you connect the strobe machine in males around 100 to 150 is the uh, is the fundamental frequency in females it is more than 170 to 245 it is uh, it is there and when the vocal cords become stiff in those cases even in males we can get a higher fundamental frequency the first point is fundamental frequency should be noted in all stroboscopy patient next is glottic closure 
So if you see this, we understood that glottic, how the glottic cycle takes place. The lower part opens, the middle part opens, upper part opens, and then the closure happens in the same direction. This is how the movement takes place. Now, it has been seen that 60% of time, that is, if we take a 10 slides, 60% of time, the vocal folds remain in the open phase, and 40% of time, it remains in closed phase. Friends, we have to keep seeing multiple stroboscopy to analyze and then give a report. So if we find that the open phase, there are too many slides or too many vocal cord is having too much open phase, generally it is seen in case of asthenia, in old age or in insufficiency cases, a little bit weakness, it will be seen that the open phase is more. Closed phase, obviously, when the muscle contractions are happening more in spasmodic dysphonia, the closed phase will be more. Glottic closure, important to comment, there are certain conditions, there may not be any glottic chink in malignancy. In vocal cord palsy, we can see that the glottic chink will be incomplete or more. In mid cord, if the cord, there's a gap in the middle part of the cord, especially in old age, we will see a gap in the middle part. Anterior gaping will be seen in sulcus vocalis and posterior gaping in spasmodic because of the contractions. So anterior gaping sulcus, posterior gaping spasmodic. Obviously, in a, as in the photo shown, Vocal nodule will, will give us an hourglass shape of uh, closure and depending on the malignancy or papilloma, it will be an irregular closure. So obviously a comment on the glottic closure should be made and why there is incomplete glottic closure that should be thought about. Uh, then we comment on the symmetry. That is, so first we saw the fundamental frequency. Second, we are seeing the clo glottic closure. Third, we are coming to symmetry. Remember, friends, symmetry is we are seeing the movement of the vocal folds, both the vocal folds together. We don't comment on right symmetry and left symmetry. It will be a comment on symmetry of both sides, both vocal cords together. So it is basically both vocal cords should reach maximal opening at the same time and both should be in the open phase and both should be in the closed phase at the same time. So both should have a maximal opening at the same time and to same extent. If one is opening more, one is opening less, that will give us the asymmetry of the vocal cords, mainly when there is stiff vocal cord or scarring of the vocal cord or weakness or paralysis of the vocal cord, there will be asymmetry of the vocal fold movement. Always comment on the symmetry as well. Amplitude. Amplitude is something which is for each vocal fold separately. So symmetry was the, uh, the, the, the comment the comment is on both vocal cords together. Amplitude, the, the comment is it is judged separately for right and left vocal cords. So a report should have normal amplitude of right and normal amplitude of left vocal cord or if there is any change. So basically what is it? It is displacement. So when we see the vocal cords, the displacement of the medial edge of the vocal fold from its position in a closed phase to its position in the maximal point when it is open. So from the midline, how much maximum outward displacement of the medial edge is taking place will give us idea about the amplitude. So this is the midline, mid, mid part, and how much lateral movement of the how much lateral movement of the middle part takes place is the amplitude from the midline. Generally, it should be half to two-third of the thickness of the vocal fold. Uh, if the movement is generally a little bit lesser in females compared to males, but if it is too less in case of mass, in case of inflammation, edema, glottic web, obviously the movement will be less. And when somebody is shouting or loud phonation, the amplitude will increase. So comment on the amplitude different separately on both the vocal folds. Periodicity is difficult to determine in case of uh, in a normal stroboscopy because each basically each cycle of right and left side should be at the same pace. So if the cycle is not correct, you may be seeing some jerky movement. You may be seeing vocal, everything will be, may be seen, but we will be seeing some jerky movements present in the cord. And these are seen in vocal cord tremors or scar following surgery where we see. But to comment exactly on periodicity, we need a high speed camera, which will give us better idea to comment on periodicity. Lastly, mucosal wave, I'm sure all of us know about this. This term was coined by, by Matsushita. Uh, what it was done was, it basically what is seen is, uh, when, the, when the glottic cycle happens, we can see that the vibration travel from the lower part to the upper vocal fold, upper, upper lip, in the form of a wave. And these waves are important because they, are, they resemble waves in a fluid medium. And so they are called mucosal wave. 
and they may be absent in cases or reduced in cases of malignancies or cyst. If a scar is present, it may be reduced. Obviously, in sulcus, if it is reduced, and if somebody is talking on very high pitch, it may be reduced. So these are conditions commonly where we will see mucosal wave reduced. If we see a pathology and we want to prognosticate it, do a stroboscopy and based on the presence, absence of mucosal wave, we can comment on this. So basically, these six points are important. Fundamental frequency, the glottic closure, the periodicity, the amplitude, the symmetry, the, the, the symmetry and the mucosal wave. All six points should be commented upon when we are talking about stroboscopy. It does have some limitations because we are not seeing each cycle. We are seeing different phases of a cycle and a slow motion wave is created. If the wave is aperiodic, definitely periodicity diagnosis on a stroboscopy becomes difficult. Yes, the subjective assessment, if I observe a stroboscopy and some other person observes, the, the result may little bit vary. So a lot of experience is required to constantly see stroboscope and then comment. It should be experienced laryngologist who should be reporting or commenting on stroboscopy. Uh, video camography, high speed camera, artificial intelligence are the way ahead to have a better diagnosis and to rule out the limitations of stroboscopy. Thus, today we try to understand about uh, about how to read a stroboscopy or how to do a stroboscopy and when we are doing stroboscopy, remember six important points that should be understand. Fundamental frequency, we should know about the mucosal wave, we should know the glottic closure, symmetry, amplitude and periodicity. These things should be committed about. Thank you so much. Amen.